Hey there folks, I'm Lane and this is Techno Maverick. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial, really a guide through Windows 10 and its new features. If you've been using Windows 10 for a couple of months, this video probably won't help you out much. But if you're just transitioning from Windows 10, either from Mac or from a previous version of Windows, I think you're gonna find this video to be very helpful. The Windows 10 desktop is where everything basically happens. Now, if you've been using Windows in the past or if you've used a Mac, this area will be familiar to you. This is where all of your applications will hover when you open them. Now, in addition to housing all the applications, you can also do other things like pin your favorite programs, folders, or files to your desktop. You can customize the desktop by changing the wallpaper or by changing things like the size of the icons that appear there. You can also choose to show or hide those desktop icons. If you're familiar with older versions of Windows, you're really going to enjoy the new modernized Windows 10 start menu. Now this will show you live updates about things like the weather and your email, as well as some other things. And you can pin any type of application, file, or folder, among many other things, to the start menu here. Once an item is pinned, you can then change it by resizing it, moving it around, or turning on or off the live tile updates. Now you can also resize the start menu to make it more to your liking. You can make it narrower or wider, and then you can also make it taller or shorter, just depending on what you'd like. Now up here in the top left corner, you have your profile information. If you have multiple accounts on this PC, you can change between those two accounts, change your account settings, lock the device, or sign out. You also have most used applications and recently installed applications. Here are some folders that you commonly use. You have quick access to your settings, power options, and then all of the other apps that are installed. And you can use this jump list to get to another area of that start menu more quickly. Windows 10 is full of shortcuts and helpful tricks. For example, when you have multiple applications open, you can grab the title bar, which is up at the top here, drag it to either side, and then you can let go and it will snap to that side, automatically filling half the screen. Windows 10 will then give you a suggestion as to what to put in the rest of that uh, open area there. So if I had three or four other apps, I'd see all of them here. Clicking on the other application, we'll just go ahead and make it fill the rest of the screen. You can also snap apps into the four corners using the title bar and then dragging it to either of the corners like that. And then in addition to that, if you hold down the Windows key and press left or right, that will go ahead and snap the application as well. Down here in the taskbar, we have Cortana. Cortana can be very helpful. So if you open up Cortana, you're going to see some information that's pertinent to you based on what Windows knows about you. So right now, Windows knows where I'm located, so it's able to show me weather, traffic updates, and then information about sports scores that I might care about. I also have some stock information here, as well as some news that it thinks I'm interested in. And you can actually customize your interests by going into your notebook here. Cortana can also be used to quickly launch applications just by typing the name of the app in there and then hitting enter, that application will go ahead and launch. The Windows key can be used to do a number of things like launching Cortana. If I hold Windows key and press Q, it will show the Cortana home screen. If I press Windows key and S, it will enable me to immediately start typing. If I hold Windows key and press M, it's going to minimize all of the open windows. Now also new to Windows 10 is the Action Center. If I hold Windows key and press A, that will go ahead and launch on the right side there. This is going to house all the notifications from different applications like Mail and Twitter. In addition to that, there are some quick settings that you can access right here in this menu. So clicking on these, we'll go ahead and toggle those settings. So I can turn Bluetooth on or off, Wi-Fi on or off, to get a quick note in OneNote, or enable quiet hours from here. There's also a tablet mode that you probably notice here. So if you're using Windows 10 on a touchscreen device, this will make it much easier for you to interact using your fingers. Virtual desktops have never been native to Windows before, but they're here now. To create a new desktop, you can actually hold the Windows key, Control key, and then press D. 
It's going to create a new desktop. You can also enter task view by clicking this button here or holding Windows key and pressing tab. So you can see I have a number of desktops open. If I just click these X's here, those desktops will close. Once I'm in this view, I can actually drag applications between these open desktops. If you close a desktop and there are programs open on it, it's actually just gonna go ahead and transfer those applications over to the remaining desktops. You can also switch between open desktops by holding the control key, windows key, and then pressing left or right on your keyboard. Windows 10 has excellent apps built in for things like mail and calendar. Let's take a look at those applications real quick. So the mail app has a live tile, which will show you any unread messages. You can also just go ahead and click on that and then view the full messages here. This app has some very nice features built in, like the ability to drag a message over into another folder. And it can be used to access email from all kinds of different accounts. So if you typically use the web browser to access Gmail, you can actually enter your information into this application to browse your email from here. There are some neat functions built into this app. There's a very handy search feature right here. This will go ahead and sync. And then you can enter selection mode, which will enable you to select multiple messages if you want to move or delete multiple messages at once. You can also click this button here to view unread or flagged messages only. There are also these neat icons here, which are shortcuts to different actions that you only see when you hover over that. Now, if you're using this on a touch screen, you can also swipe left or right to take these actions on the left or right here. You can also change these actions. So if you don't use archive or if you don't use flag, you can go into the settings here and then options, and then you can go ahead and change what these swipe or hover actions do. In addition, you also have the option to use a custom signature, send automatic replies if you're going to be out of town or something like that, and then you can also turn on or off notifications. The Mail app can also be customized. So if you don't like the colors that I'm using, you can actually go ahead and change that. So there are a number of different colors that you can use here, or you can choose to let it use the accent color that you're choosing for Windows. There also is a light and dark theme, depending on what you prefer. Now you can also change the background photo here. Now you can also set one of your own photos as this background by using the browse feature. There's also a wonderful calendar app built into Windows 10, which you can access by clicking this icon here or just by launching the calendar app from your start menu or Cortana. Just like the mail app, the calendar app can also sync different calendars from other services like iCloud or Gmail, and you can turn those on or off if you only want to view one calendar at a time. In addition, you can also see the weather for the coming week right here. You can also create a new event just by clicking on the date that you want to add the event to. You can change the name, time, and location from here, as well as what calendar this syncs to, or you can go into more details to add a lot of other things. You can invite people, set a reminder for yourself, set the event to repeat, and then you can also add detailed notes. Just like the mail app, the calendar app can also be personalized so that you see different colors and a different light or dark theme. There's also a wonderful photos app built into Windows 10. Here it's actually syncing photos from my OneDrive, so this happened automatically. You can turn that feature on or off, of course. Now, this also will show you any photos that have been saved to the device that you're currently using, either if you downloaded them from the web, or if you've taken them with that device, or if you've transferred them to that device using something like an SD card or a USB thumb drive. In addition to browsing your photos, you can actually make light edits or enhancements to those photos as well. So if we go into the editing mode here, see there are a number of different things that we can do. We can change things like the brightness and contrast, as well as color. So we can change the color temperature, tint, or saturation, and then there's this nice color boost feature. Basically just drag this onto a particular color, and if you want to see that color more vibrantly, you can turn it up, or if you want it to be less vibrant, you can turn it down a little bit. There are also Instagram-like filters built right in here into the application. There are also some more advanced features here like red eye reduction and then retouching. 
The last thing I wanna talk about is Windows 10's personalization features. Microsoft wants you to feel at home using this OS, so you can go ahead and open settings and go into personalization to change a number of different things. So you can choose your background photo from here, and then you can actually choose to have a slideshow or just a solid color if you would like. And then you can also change the colors. So these are different accent colors which will appear throughout the operating system. So if I change to blue here, you'll see this app was actually themed blue. Now all of my live tiles are also appearing blue. And in the action center, these toggles are now blue. You can also choose to show the color in different places. So for instance, right now the start menu is just black. It has a black background and the same goes for the action center. But this is something I can change. If I toggle this on, all of that is now themed. There's also a nice effect here. I can make the taskbar, start menu, and action center semi-transparent. So you can see, basically I can see through the action center and the start menu here just a little bit. You can also personalize the lock screen by choosing different photos or a slideshow. And then you can choose to have detailed status on some things like the weather. So on the lock screen, it will actually show me the current temperature. And then you can also choose quick status for other applications such as mail, messages, and phone. You can also customize the start menu in a number of different ways. Show more tiles essentially shows four columns of live tiles on the start menu instead of just three. You can also show suggestions on start, which will basically show you applications that you might be interested in installing. Now you can also choose to show most used apps and recently used apps, which are these sections that you see right here. You can also choose to use the start menu full screen if you like the Windows 8 look. Now in addition, I have a number of different folders, downloads, pictures, videos, all showing right there on my start menu. Now you can actually customize which folders appear there. So if you'd more frequently access documents, you can turn that on and now documents is available. If you'd like more information about Windows 10, definitely check out either of the annotations that you see on the screen now. The top one will take you to a playlist about different tips and tricks, and the bottom one will teach you about different apps and games. If you can't click on these annotations, you can find the links in the description below. Additionally, if you'd like more information or more videos like this one that you've just watched, you can subscribe to this channel for more.